ChemExam Explained, where the aim is chemistry clarity, exam mastery. In today's video, we will be looking at Cape Chemistry, Unit 2, 2021, Module 3. Let's go. 3A, Figure 1 shows the Haber-Bosch synthesis of ammonia from its elements. Let us examine the diagram. You can see that we have hydrogen and nitrogen going into the reactor. After they react and produce the ammonia, it is cooled by the condenser. Any unreacted gas is replaced back into the reactor to produce more ammonia. You can see here that our pressure is 200 to 600 atmosphere, which is 20,000 to 60,000 kilopascal. So the pressure is high. The temperature is low to moderate. The equation for the synthesis of N2 and H2 to produce ammonia gives us an enthalpy of formation value of negative 92.38 kilojoule. This, of course, is saying that our reaction is exothermic. This simply means that heat is a product. Part 1. State one reason why a catalyst is needed in this reaction. The catalyst is needed to speed up the rate of the reaction by providing an alternate pathway by lowering the activation energy. Part 2. Using Le Chatelier's principle, explain the effect of temperature on the direction of equilibrium for the ammonia formation. Again, remember that once it is negative, it is exothermic, which means that heat is a product. If the enthalpy of the reaction was positive, it would be endothermic, then heat would be a reactant. But in this case, it is exothermic, heat is a product. So in answering the question, the reaction is exothermic. Therefore, increasing temperature shifts equilibrium to the left, producing more N2 and H2. So that is not good if you want to produce more ammonia. So high temperature would not favor the production of ammonia. Decreasing the temperature would shift the equilibrium to the right, producing more ammonia. So for this reaction, low temperature is the best condition to produce more ammonia. Part 3. State whether the temperatures used in the Haber-Bosch synthesis favors the formation of high yields of ammonia. A temperature of 300 to 500 degrees Celsius was used which is low to moderate temperature. So yes, this temperature favors the formation of high yields of ammonia since it shifts the position of equilibrium to the right. Once you shift the equilibrium to the right, you are producing more ammonia. Part four, comment on the statement, high pressure conditions favors the formation of ammonia in high yields. Before we comment, let's look at the equation and let's examine the stoichiometric ratio, what we call the mole ratio. Here we have one mole of N2 and three moles of H2 to produce two moles of ammonia. We must know that pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles. So if you look on the left hand side, the side with the higher number of mole would be the side with the high pressure. And the side with a lower number of moles would be the side with a low pressure. You must also be reminded that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So you can increase pressure by decreasing volume, or you can decrease pressure by increasing volume. So let's begin to answer the question. High pressure condition favors the formation of high yields of ammonia since the left-hand side has the higher pressure. According to Le Chatelier's principle, the system must oppose the change, thereby shifting the equilibrium to the right-hand side, thus lowering the pressure. Part 5. With reference to Figure 1 on page 13, state two possible design limitations that could lead to reduced product yield. Let's look back at the diagram. Notice we have gases coming in and we have pipes. So we can consider the pressure that the pipes can withstand. We can look at the reactor 
and we can discuss the condenser. So these are the, the areas we're gonna focus on to look at the limitations of this process. So let's begin to answer the question in looking at the possible design limitations. One, if the reactor does not have efficient systems to control and maintain ideal temperature, that could be one of the design limitations. Two, if the reactor walls and pipes are not robust and thick, high pressures could burst them, causing leaks. And three, if the condenser is not designed efficiently, ammonia gas may not be condensed properly. Part six, write the KP expressions for the Haber-Bosch process. So we are going to write the expression using this equation. So Kp is equal to the partial pressure of ammonia squared over the partial pressure of N2 times the partial pressure of hydrogen cubed. Part seven, state the impact of the catalyst on Kp of the reaction. A catalyst has no effect on Kp. What it does is it speeds up the reaction rate of both the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. Part B, the use of an iron molybdenum sulfur catalyst is another method of synthesizing ammonia from its elements under standard atmospheric conditions using UV light in aqueous solvent. Complete statements one to four. In comparison to the Haber-Bosch method, the method above can prove to be one, a high yielding process because milder conditions using UV light means lower temperature. And we had already discussed that lower temperature would favor the forward reaction. So milder conditions using UV light means lower temperature than the Haber-Bosch method leading to higher yields of ammonia. Part two, a more energy efficient process because it requires milder conditions of temperature and pressure, that is lower temperature and lower pressure to produce ammonia. Part three, a lower cost process because it does not need expensive equipment to produce the higher temperature and pressure, which lowers operational cost. Part four, a significant discovery because this new process mimics the natural enzymatic process more closely than the Haber-Bosch process. This will lead to more sustainable and environmentally friendly ammonia production methods. Part five, comment on the statement, the production of ammonia under standard atmospheric conditions would prove to be more efficient in the presence of a catalyst than the Haber-Bosch process. So the reaction will take place at lower temperature, which will favor the production of ammonia. We know that the presence of the catalyst will increase the rate of the reaction by lowering the activation energy. Part six, identify another feature in the design that makes it green, apart from the use of a catalyst in the existing Haber-Bosch process. So before we look at how to make it green, let's discuss the definition of green chemistry. So green chemistry is using a set of principles that reduce or eliminates the use or generation of hazardous substances in the design, manufacture, and applications of chemical products. So in this case, how can we make it efficient by not wasting our chemicals or the reactants in this case? So the way to make it green is by recycling the N2 and H2. So the recycling of the N2 and H2 is what makes the Haber-Bosch process green. Part C. In recent years, ethanol has been identified as an important industrial resource that has seen a steady increase in production. C. Part 1. In the yeast catalyzed production of ethanol, 60% of the world's ethanol is obtained from the fermentation of sucrose. Write one equation that represents a step in this process. So they require one equation. So here I have two equations and any one you write would suffice. 
So in the first equation, I have sucrose plus water using the enzyme invertase to form glucose and fructose. Instead of writing out the C6H12O6 two times, you could put two in front of the molecule. The other equation is now converting your glucose to ethanol and carbon dioxide using the enzyme zymase. C part two. Bioethanol is a name given to ethanol produced from biomass or plant material. Write two statements that support the idea that ethanol is a green resource. Statement one, bioethanol is produced from the renewable biological resources, which will decrease dependence on fossil fuels. Statement two, bioethanol combustion releases cleaner emissions, that is less greenhouse gases compared to fossil fuels, making it more environmentally friendly. C part three, sugarcane requires four times more water during ethanol production when compared to sugar beets. State two factors that would preclude countries in the Caribbean from considering sugar beets as a viable source crop for ethanol production. One, climate suitability. Sugar beets require climate for optimal growth. The Caribbean climate is unsuitable since it requires cooler temperature. Two, the economic consideration. The infrastructure for sugarcane is already present and it might be too expensive to introduce a new crop, which is the sugar beet. Part four, ethanol is used in mouthwash formulations in addition to active ingredients such as menthol, thymol, and eucalyptal. The purpose of these ingredients is to aid in the breakdown of plaque on teeth. Describe the role of ethanol in this process. Ethanol is first acting as a solvent for the ingredients, but it has antimicrobial properties as well, which will help in the killing of bacteria in the mouth to improve oral health. C part five. In a brief experiment, a student sought to make mouthwash by trying a series of formulations. Three of the formulations are listed below. Match each formulation using the letters A, B, or C with the appropriate set of characteristics that best describes it. So let's look at formulation A. We have 10% water, 40% ethanol, and of course, we have some small percentages for the other ingredients. So what we're looking for is the higher percentage of ethanol than water, which will affect the boiling point. So we're looking at ethanol being the higher percentage. It will cause this formulation to have a low boiling point. Let's look at formulation B. We have 40% water in this case and 10% ethanol. So we're looking now at an intermediate. Therefore, the temperature would be moderate. And why did I say that? Because if you look at formulation C, you'll see that water is at 80%, which would give us a higher boiling point. So in examining the data, we can see that the one with more ethanol would have the lower boiling point and the one with more water would have the higher or highest boiling point. So in looking at the characteristics, Based on the information given, we could go with characteristics one would go best with formulation C with a higher boiling point and low cooling effect because the ethanol would have a lower percentage. For characteristics two, we say that we'd go with A because the boiling point is low in this case and a stronger cooling effect because it has a higher percentage of ethanol. And for characteristics three, we're going with B because it is now the intermediate boiling point where the water is not the lowest or not the highest. So we'll go with the intermediate to be B formulation. This is the end of module three, 2021. Please remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you will be notified. Thank you.